Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the briefing. The Secretary General is uh, launching the 7 Billion Actions Initiative. Uh, in just uh, seven weeks, the global population will reach 7 billion. And uh, obviously, the Secretary General is uh, saying that we're not uh, simply here to acknowledge that uh, milestone, but uh, to address all of its vast implications. Uh, he's expected to say that the campaign that's being launched, uh, 7 Billion Actions, is a clarion call to people, communities, countries, and our partners, uh, such as uh, non-governmental organizations, uh, businesses, academics, and uh, faith leaders. And we'll have his uh, full remarks available shortly with more details on that initiative. Ian Martin, the Secretary General's Special Advisor for Post-Conflict Planning for Libya, is expected to arrive in Tripoli tomorrow to continue his consultations with the National Transitional Council on the UN's planning for the provision of post-conflict support to Libya. The Secretary General has spent, uh, uh, sent a senior team led by Assistant Secretary General Anthony Banbury uh, from the Department of Field Support, the Military Advisor General Babakar Gay, and uh, Police Advisor Anne-Marie Orla to meet uh, with the uh, mission's uh, leadership uh, in Haiti and uh, to support all necessary measures being taken by the mission, MINUSTA, to enforce the UN's zero tolerance policy on misconduct by its personnel. In addition, the team will meet with the Haitian authorities to convey to them how seriously the United Nations and the Secretary General himself take the allegations of misconduct and sexual abuse. The UN appreciates the swift response of the government of Uruguay, including the investigation that is underway and the government's stated commitment to taking all appropriate uh, disciplinary and, if required, judicial measures following the investigation. The Special Representative of the Secretary General for Somalia, Augustine Mahiga, briefed the Security Council this morning. He said that uh, although the security situation remains fragile and tenuous, this is a good opportunity to end the transition and to stabilize the country. He noted the peace process has moved forward and that uh, even holding the consultative meeting in Mogadishu in an unstable environment was an achievement. According to Dr. Mahiga, the withdrawal of Al-Shabaab uh, from Mogadishu has offered the government a chance to expand territory under its control and enhance its legitimacy by delivering services to the population. Addressing the humanitarian crisis in the country, he said the Security Council and the international community have a moral authority to help ensure aid reaches the famine-stricken areas of the Horn of Africa. And you can find a copy of his speech in our office. The Security Council this morning also adopted resolutions on Sierra Leone and the tribunals for the former Yugoslavia and Rwanda. And the Council has scheduled consultations for four o'clock this afternoon on Serbia. The Joint Special Representative for the United Nations African Union peacekeeping mission in Darfur said that the mission is working closely with the government of Sudan and the liberation and justice movement on implementing the Doha document for peace in the region that was signed in July. Ibrahim Gambari told reporters in Khartoum that efforts continued to further stabilize Darfur and promote early recovery and development. He said, we strongly believe that giving the people of Darfur the security to return to their homes and opportunities to build livelihoods is the best guarantee for enduring peace. Mr. Gambari repeated his call for other groups to join the peace process and contribute to building a better tomorrow for all Darfuris. His full statement is available on the mission's website. The UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, will be sending family tents and crucial relief supplies to communities in Sindh and Baluchistan that are being affected by torrential rain and flooding in Pakistan. The bulk of the relief items, including 10,000 tents, 20,000 plastic sheets, and 10,000 kits of household items, are being sent to southern Sindh. The first UNHCR relief convoy, consisting of 2,000 tents, 4,000 plastic sheets and 2,000 household kits is expected to arrive in Badian tomorrow. More than 140,000 people in Sindh will begin to benefit from these tents and supplies in the next few days. 
the agency is also supplying 800 tents and 900 plastic sheets as well as hundreds of other relief items to communities in Baluchistan. The Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs estimates that the number of people affected by the floods is about 5.5 uh, million and uh, some 230 people have died. Uh, the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says uh, organizations are using contingency stocks and diverting resources uh, from early recovery programs to meet uh, these uh, life-saving needs. Uh, water sources are no longer considered safe, leaving people to rely on open pond waters and at risk of contracting communicable diseases. The leaders of uh, Greek Cypriot and uh, Turkish Cypriot communities discussed citizenship this morning in Nicosia. Following the talks, uh, Lisa Buttenheim, the Secretary General's Special Representative, told reporters that the atmosphere was warm and friendly. The leaders' next meeting will take place on uh, Friday, this Friday, 16th of September, during which they will discuss the economy chapter. Uh, tomorrow, as uh, we've said, at 11.30, there'll be a press conference here by the Secretary General in this auditorium. That, of course, means there won't be a noon briefing. And then at 2 o'clock, there'll be a press conference by Dr. Ala Alwan, Assistant De uh, Director General for Non-Communicable Dise Diseases and Mental Health of the World Health Organization. And he'll, uh, this will be a briefing on the high-level meeting on non-communicable diseases, which will take place uh, next week on the 19th and 20th of September.